Yes. You know, Simon, you're talking about history from a bird's eye view. We're talking about history from a personal witness. Did you ever have the chance to speak with your parents about their own personal experiences of the Holocaust? Well, they didn't speak about it per se, no different than my brother never spoke about his experience in Vietnam. Uh, they did get reparations. Uh, they were, they were, uh, when I was young, I would go to parties when I was young, five, six years old, with other people who were Holocaust survivors and at that age of being five or six and looking around and seeing people who had numbered tattoos on their forearm inside trying to think why did they have these numbers. So your parents never, your parents never really discussed it with you, because I think, um, and thanks for your call, Simon. I appreciate all the uh, information that you share well, with I'm us. After one last question. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I I know there's an emphasis, and there should be on the far right. My question that is also with the far left. I'd like to ask her, which is very very important to have a Jewish state in the world that we can call home, that we can go to. How does she feel when people compare the state of Israel to Nazi Germany? All right, Simon, thank you for that question. Renee, you know, um, Michael in Port Charlotte, you're on the air uh, with Renee Hammond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're going to need to speak into your phone, Michael. We can't hear you. Hi. Hi. Okay, speak up. The strange uh, situation is that the Holocaust uh, consisted of other people uh, that often aren't included within the conversation. Um, it's branded as a, a Jewish kind of extermination. And if there were other people that were victims then perhaps people should be skeptical about how it's being talked about. Well, I think the Holocaust is, uh, for anyone who cares to to uh, look into the history, they'll find that it wasn't only Jews who were exterminated by the Nazis. Yes. It was homosexuals, it was the Roma people, it Gypsy was homosexual. gypsies, who, Roma people, and communists, political dissidents. Um, How do you survive a Holocaust? I mean, the white supremacist group are a front. They're phony. Besides that, how do you survive a Holocaust? Well, I, I think that, thank you, Michael, for that, um, that question. I think that's one of the most important questions that uh, we as citizens can look at when we think about the Holocaust and when we think about um, the kind of nationalism that we're hearing about today um, and the kind of discrimination. What about all the people who aren't out there, who are not speaking up, who are not... Um, you know, saying this is wrong, who are not counter-demonstrating. You know, in, in Holocaust studies, in history, they talk about the good German, the people who just, you know, claim they didn't know what was going on. They were just going along with their lives. Um, but you were in a factory, Renee, and you, were, you had to be interacting with people who came in and out of the factory, um, you know, to see the slave laborers and to see how they were treated. There were probably people from the outside. Did you get help? Any help from people from the outside? Yes, we did. Oh, how wonderful. Tell us about that. Well, when we started hearing about that we will be taken back to Auschwitz, we said, no way. We have to avoid that. Yeah. We don't want to go. We'll do anything but not go back to Auschwitz because Auschwitz only meant death. 
it's now whatever, and we risked the escape. And we walked out of the camp, and we walked around until we came upon a bombed out Jewish cemetery where only the se a cellar was left over. Oh, the cellar. Uh -huh. The cellar. Uh -huh. So we got down into the cellar. We had saved a little bread to take with us, so for a couple of days we ate that. And then we said, well, we're going to starve. We better get in touch with the man that promised to help. And, and this one woman had an idea where he lived. Two of the girls went and approached him. And he was in shock when he saw the girl. He said, I meant you. I didn't mean that you bring four others four, with you, four right? Other, others but did he help us. you all? But then every night he brought us a boiled potato and water. Hey, that's so because fascinating. Was, so you, you can never say all Germans are bad or Jews are bad. There are good in every nation.